idol, uh, Jean-Louis Barreau from Les Enfants de Paradis, uh, to seamlessly intertwine comedy and drama. And for that reason, I've got to give it the tip of the hat. I do in my show. Um, uh, it's 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 the apartment. Well, I was going to say, I just saw Cowboy uh, the other day, and that's a different performance for him as, as the tenderfoot that kind of becomes the cowboy. And I, I think that's that was a different performance for me. I think it was a wild one for him as well. Um, I, it's been a while since I've seen Cowboy. Now i got to go back and watch it again with Glenn Ford. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. That's... Uh, that, and that one is more sort of unidirectional. I mean, it moves in one direction, whereas the apartment, I think, really... It was almost like it was almost like impressionistic yes. music and impressionistic painting. Billy Wilder took a marvelous palette of colors and splashed them on the screen with seeming abandon. Yet there was great direction to it. It, it, it moved in a very specific direction. As uh, I, I do the play that I'm doing right now in my father's voice, and as he says, you know. Um, uh, uh, when I finally got the chance to show people what I thought acting should be all about, that's when I finally got the chance to play those roles that I'd only ever dreamed of, like Joe Clay in the days of Wine and Roses. And that's that's when he really that's when he really brought it home. And guess who directed Days of Wine and Roses? Exactly, which is amazing film. Him and Lee Remick are, are fantastic. They really are. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's for my pleasure. It's amazing to get Lovely to speaking with you. All right, thank you. I just want to ask you about missing. Missing his one, his kind of his serious side, you know, with, uh, you know, kind of an unexpected uh, parts, you know, when it kind of like the social issue kind of films. Oh yeah, we give we give a hell of a tip of the hat. I, I give a hell of a tip of the hat to Missing uh, in the show, uh, not only because it was um, you know uh, Costa Gavras. It's just a brilliant observation on a truly tragic situation that, uh, uh, you know, there is no reason anything like that should have ever happened, let alone be caused uh, in conjunction with our country. Uh, but, but secondly, because it wasn't, I, I only found out because of my wife, Gina, that uh, when he had to play those scenes where he found out that his son was dead, in order to, to, to get to that emotional place, I found out that he was thinking of me. And I didn't find that out until after he was dead. And Gina was, was talking with me about it one day. I said, wait a minute, what are you saying? She said, well, that's what he told me. He used you to, to get to that place of emotion. Yeah. He said, I said, he never told me that. And isn't that so typical of yeah. fathers and sons? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you found out eventually. Though. Yeah, so am I. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he was he was just so good. He's kind of a kind of an everyman in a way. Uh, but well, he was the every. That's that's what he was. Uh, yeah. That's that's what he did. And I think a lot of that came out of the facts. Came out of his honesty. He was just an honest guy. I mean, he didn't, there was no pretense, there was no smoke and mirrors, you know, he, he, he just said it like it was. And, and, you know, what you saw up on that screen was what you got. That's uh, something that I really try to, that is where, where the, 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 the piece of theater that I'm doing right now is a tribute to him. Uh, I really do try to raise the bar like he did wherever I go uh, and, and, and in this performance. Uh, because if there's anybody whose memory deserves to stay alive, it's him. Definitely. Oh, Thank you, Chris, Lord, excuse me for two minutes.